A very wonderful morning to my esteemed listener. I am Yemi Grisman Adoluju, lead pastor, Lighthouse International Christian Center, Samanda UI Road, Ibadan, Nigeria, welcoming you to today's edition of our program, Daily Impact. We are considering the importance of the soil in the productivity or the survival or the fruitfulness of a seed. We have seen the seed as your location, where you are located, where you live, where you worship, where you invest, or where you do business. This is your soil, and it is the condition of this soil that determines the fruitfulness or the productivity of your seed. We have also been looking at the soil as your heart, the heart of a man, which is very vital, particularly to the seed of the word of God the seed of your thought, the seed of your imagination. It is the heart of a man that is the soil where such thoughts or the word of God or imagination could germinate or fail. Your seed that is the word of God, your thoughts, your idea, your imagination, either fails or prospers depending on the condition of the, the soil that is your heart. We have seen so many hearts that we must not have allowed to remain in us, busy and a crowded art. We have seen evil art, corrupt art, defiled art, proud art, wicked art, uncircumcised art, subtle art or hard art. Then we've seen forward, that is perverse, dishonest, deceitful, crooked or twisted mind. These are the soil where the word of God can never germinate or grow. This is the type of a soil that can never produce result. Let's begin to look at the good art this morning. The good art. Your art must be good to produce result. In Matthew chapter number 12 and in verse number 35, the word of God says, A good man out of the good treasure of his art bring forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure bring forth evil things. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart will bring forth good things. And so it is the thought, the art of a man that determines the product of that life, of that heart. If your art is good, if your thinking is good, your thought is good, then the fruits that will be produced from that good art will be good seed. Don't forget the good ground, the seed that fell on a good ground was the only seed that produced result in 30-fold, 60-fold, and 100-fold. Let your heart be good. Be a man, be a woman of a good heart, a man whose heart pants after the Lord, a man whose heart longs for the Lord, a man with a good heart who desires to do the will of God, who seeks the will of the Lord and desires to do it, who desires to please God in all that he does, a man whose heart is good, who is not visited on his own advantage to the detriment of other people, a man who does not blow out other people's light for his own to shine, a man with a good heart, he does not destroy other people to gain an advantage, a man with a good heart. It's a man that is objective in all that he does, in all his thinking. What your life produces is a picture of what the condition of your heart looks like. The fruits that emanate from your life, the fruit of your lips, the things that you say, the things that you do, the way you behave and reason is a picture of the condition of your heart. If your heart is good and the things that comes out of you will be very good seed, very good thoughts. If your heart is corrupt and not good, only corruption can come out of you. The words that come out of such a mouth will be corrupt words. Feel the words because the heart is not good. The heart is corrupt. So your heart must be good if it must produce result for the kingdom of God. Another good art to be considered is a true art. Art that is true. The word of God in Hebrews chapter 10 and in verse 22 says, Let us draw near with a true art in full assurance of faith having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. There is the need for you, for me, to draw near with a true heart. Let your heart be true. Having your conscience or your heart sprinkled from an evil conscience, a man with a true heart 
as his conscience purged, his conscience is free from all evil. The body is washed from all pollution. Your conscience must be free from deceit, from perversion. That is a heart that is true, a heart that is true, that draws near to God in truth, not in deceit, not just looking for what to gain, not just looking for an advantage from God or from church or from someone. There are people who relate with others just for what they are hoping to gain or to get. Their heart is not true. They can backbite or backstab. They are wicked and evil in their heart. It doesn't matter how pious they look. If your heart is not true, you are a wicked person. If your heart is not true, you are a forward person. You are dishonest. You are deceitful. You are crooked. Your mind is twisted. If you don't relate with people with a true heart, if you hide deceit beneath your tongue and you speak lies to deceive your neighbor, then your heart is not right with God. Your heart is not true with God. But the God's word says we should draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our heart sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let your heart be sprinkled from an evil conscience. Let your heart be free from evil conscience. Have a conscience that is void of offense, both towards God and towards men. Another important heart that will produce results in the kingdom is a willing heart. Your heart must be willing. God never imposes his will on anyone. He allows us to exercise our will. We are free moral agents. God desires you to be willing in your relationship with him. Paul, in his epistle to Philemon about Onesimus, said, I will not do anything without your mind. God will also not do anything without your mind. He will never impose his will on you. He wants you to do things as a free moral agent, exercising your discretion and your free will to honor him. In the book of Exodus chapter 35 and in verse number 5, the word of God says, Take from among you an offering for to the Lord. Whoever is of a willing heart, let him bring it as an offering to the Lord. Gold, silver, and bronze. Whoever is of a willing heart. God wants you to be willing. And don't forget in the days of his power, his people shall be willing. God does not impose his will, I repeat, on anyone. He wants you to exercise your discretion by submitting your will to his own will. Be willing. Are you willing to serve the Lord your God? Are you willing to work for the Lord? Are you willing to give to the Lord? Are you willing to sacrifice unto the Lord? You must be willing. God desires you to be willing. And so it is a willing heart that will produce results in God's kingdom. Anything done out of compulsion or forced will not produce any result. If you give out of compulsion or out of jealousy or envy, that will never produce any result. But if you give willingly from your heart, ask these men who gave an offering out of their free will, out of a willing heart. They gave offering to the Lord, gold, silver, and bronze. They gave blue, purple, scarlet thread, and so many things. They gave willingly. And so God accepted their offering because it came from a willing heart. And God blessed them in return. Let your heart be willing. Be a man of a good heart. Be a man of a true heart. Be a man of a willing heart. Be willing to do the will of God. Be willing, be ready to submit your will to the will of the Almighty God. This art will produce great results for the kingdom. This art, seed will survive in this art. Seed will grow in this art. Seed will become fruitful in this art. May your heart be a fertile ground for the seed of God's word, for the seed of good thoughts to germinate and produce result to the glory of the name of the Lord. In Jesus' precious name, let us pray. I'd like you to lift up your voice and pray, Father, let my heart be good and be true 
towards you. Make my heart true towards you, O God. Make my heart good towards you. Make it true, O God. In the name of Jesus, I pray that you will make my heart true and make it good towards you, my dear Father. Make it good towards my neighbor. Make my heart good towards your kingdom and towards people generally. Make me a man of a good heart, a man, O God, of a true heart. Let my heart be true towards you and towards others. In the name of Jesus. I'd like you to begin to pray and ask that your heart be sprinkled from an evil conscience. Begin to pray. Father, I ask that my heart be sprinkled from an evil conscience. I draw near to you with a true heart and I ask, oh God, that my heart be sprinkled from an evil conscience in the name of Jesus. Make my heart right towards you, oh God, and let your name be glorified. In Jesus' precious name, lift up your voice and pray. Father, I am willing. I submit my will to the will of you, the living God. I am willing to follow you, to serve you, to sacrifice to you, to obey your words and your injunctions. And Father, I submit my will to the will of you, the living God. I plant my will in your will, O God. In the name of Jesus, I am willing. Help me, O God. In Jesus' precious name, I'd like you to lift your voice and pray, Father, let my heart be fruitful and be productive. Let the soil of my heart bring fruit to the praise of the glory of your name. This is my prayer, O God, that my heart will be fruitful and be productive, that the soil of my heart will bring forth fruit to the praise of the glory of your name. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father, in Jesus' precious name. Amen. I pray that the Lord will make your heart a good heart. Your heart will be good towards God. Your heart will be good towards your neighbor, towards your spouse, towards your colleagues. Your heart will be true. I pray for grace to draw near unto God with a true heart. I pray that your heart will be sprinkled from an evil conscience in the name of Jesus. I pray that God will make you willing, willing to serve him, to follow him, to give, to sacrifice to him, that the Lord will help you to submit and to surrender your will to his own will. I pray that your heart will be a productive and a fruitful heart and God will be honored in your life. In Jesus' precious name, amen. I invite my esteemed listener to join us later today at noon for our interdenominational prayer convocation, Moriah Prayers. Join us at noon, 12 noon at the Light Cathedral. You may wish to join this prayer meeting on any of our social media platforms, on Facebook at LICCNG1, on Twitter at LICCNG, or on YouTube at Lighthouse International Christian Center. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on other social media platforms. My handle is at Yemi Graceman. Forward this message and share the link with your contacts. Until I come your way again tomorrow for another exciting edition of our program, I am Yemi Graceman at Duluju, wishing you a very glorious day and the Lord bless you.